Okay, hello everybody. Um, welcome back to my studio. And today what I'm going to do is paint some grapes for you. I uh, talked to you about uh, painting grapes. They seem to be uh, quite a challenge uh, sometimes. And uh, there's so many of them, I guess kind of like flowers. There's so many and there's so much detail um, that uh, they can become, sometimes they can become like this unearthly creature in your painting with a thousand eyeballs staring at you. So, uh, so what I've done today to save some time is uh, I've gone ahead and set up the background color, uh, the basic mass color and shape of the grapes. Now, unfortunately, I already videoed this whole thing, this whole first step, uh, but the very first um, segment came out very blurry. So unfortunately, you see my signature here and the more detail down here. I just decided to scrape the grapes back again to make sure that I cover, uh, just cover again what I covered in the first segment that unfortunately was not really a very good, would not have helped you at all. It was so blurry. So um, anyhow, uh, I just have a basic mass in. I'm going to give you all of the materials as well as, you know, the, the colors I've used in the background as well as the grapes, so on and so forth in the description under the video. So uh, look there for those paint uh, color mixtures. Um, and also, you know, try whenever you're starting out a painting, really try to keep masses very simple. Uh, simple color. I'm starting off with one solid color, one solid shape. Uh, I was trying to pay attention to these negative shapes around the background, uh, looking for some variety there. Uh, and, you know, just starting, starting it off as its whole unit first rather than, um, rather than starting off with one little round grape and adding on the next round grape and so on and so forth. So the first thing I like to do is just to try to get an idea of uh, some main groupings of grapes and typically these are uh, you know placed um, closer to uh, your yourself you know uh, the grapes that are closer to you and uh, or how you could think of it is front and center you know the ones that are in front of the bunch of grapes and also more in the center of the form meaning uh, you know not so much these underplane grapes or so much these back layer grapes uh, you don't really want to concern yourself too much now this one tends to kind of skip a beat and then pick up whenever I'm looking at this particular bunch I notice that my eye kind of skips this one next to it and picks up over here and you're you know you want to use your highlights that way Uh, they're really what leads the eye through the painting, or the light, I should say, rather. Uh, but the highlights can be, especially on grapes, a great place to get started. Just so you can start to figure out, you know, how you're going to find your way in this uh, <laughs> conundrum. I don't think that one's quite necessary. So, you know, I can already get a sense of, you know, is that what the flow is going to be just by placing the highlights um, too much? You know, is it too much? Uh, maybe this one. Uh, so you can already kind of get a sense of the rhythm and, and how paced these are. Uh, I'd rather put something on, you know, really nice and big and gloppy. Uh, than too tiny at first. This is all, this is not in its final stage. This is just to help me see the, the overall finished look of the thing and also just get a sense of where to begin. So the next, so that's one of the kind of like metal grapes have a lot of value contrast between the local color or local value of the object and the highlight. It's a big value jump. From one to the other generally unless you're maybe dealing with green grapes 
And uh, the other thing is how their, one of their other characteristics is this transmitted light that flows through the grape. And one thing I want to make note of here is that this is just a general idea of how to paint grapes to get you started. You know, it's never a good idea to, you know, have one solution uh, every single time maybe you paint a grape or one color mixture or, you know, I'm going to paint every singular grape in my whole painting this way or with equal detail. You know, so all that, this is just the, the basis of it or the principles of what makes, what perhaps makes a grape look like a grape rather than, you know, an apple. How is a grape different from an apple? What are the characteristics there? Um, so that's mainly what I want to give you today, what to look for on grapes. And then, you know, of course, your own technique of painting, uh, how you apply the paint, your color choices, so on and so forth, um, you know, will help you to elaborate on this idea. So the next thing I like to do is to get some of this transmitted light. So kind of like uh, if you ever see a portrait painting and the human eye uh, is usually darker on the lit side, uh, this our light coming from top left here, uh, the human eye usually is darker on facing the light and then there's a little bit of light passing through it. Uh, on the opposite side, which is basically reversed from, you know, what everything, most objects are, you know, the lit edge, if you're doing an orange, you know, the lit edge of the orange is going to be a light value. The right hand side, the shadow side is going to be, of course, in shadow and generally a darker value. So that's one of the things uh, you want to look out for when you're painting grapes. Otherwise, if you don't get in at least some of this transmitted light, you know, and, and I'm definitely exaggerating it, of course. Um, if you don't get that in, then they'll kind of just wind up looking like little, you know, maybe blueberries or, you know, cherries, something like that. Now there's a difference between transmitted light and reflected light. So, you know, this particular great not only has transmitted light but there's also a little touch of reflected light that's picking up on the underplane uh, you know from the background uh, so you know please know that there is a difference between the two one is more related to the local color of the actual grape itself and the other is related to something that is casting Okay, so as I was saying, you want to put, uh, use some of your background color. In this case, just it's just kind of a neutral grayish tone. Uh, so you can use that to push any of the ones further back in space, you know, that are farther, farther away from you. There's kind of this other one here, right behind this front one that I didn't quite get in. So we'll start to let me see if I can get that one to show up a bit more. Okay. And uh, so really all you need is your base color, which uh, in this case was uh, some alizarin, cab red deep, and a little touch of ivory black. Um, so you start off with that and then, you know, use a little bit lighter, more chromatic color for the light passing through the grape, which in this case was just basically a little bit more cad yellow light added to that base mixture. And uh, from there, uh, we get on the highlights, you know, if you want to add a specific color to your highlight, you know, if you're working in a very cool light situation, you might add a bit more blue to it. If you have a really warm light on your subject, of course, you might have more yellow. 
uh, to it. Okay. So you can see too, like this dusting maybe has a little bit more chroma, a little bit more color in it. Uh, and then, you know, this one, not so much. So just having that little bit of variety is helpful. Again, coming in with some background color on that back one. And uh, usually you keep this dusting color uh, at first, you know, relatively like that might be a little too light. Uh, you know, somewhat, uh, you don't want it to be as light as the highlight, of course, because overall a grape is relatively dark unless you're dealing maybe with like green grapes, but like uh, these dark red grapes. Overall, if you squint down their value, uh, is really still a dark mass. So um, we're really not you know, taking it too far away from that original uh, mass and color, you know, we're not raising the value tremendously. So you kind of this little triangle shape here. Uh, these three, these three little uh, grapes. I felt like this one could, that back underneath one could be beefed up a little bit. The shape, you know, re, redo the shape on that. Um, if there's a little bit of stem, you know, peeking through, you know, that's the other thing too. I don't, I don't recommend, you know, trying to get every little stem in there. If there's one that you feel like really helps the cause, go ahead and, you know, put that in. Look to see where grapes, you know, one might overlap the other. You know, so that, like, for instance, here, this edge on this particular grape is overlapping in front of the stem. So I want to make sure that I get that look. Um, and all of these, you know, highlights, original highlights, are subject to change as far as placement goes or which ones I think I might need uh, or not need. In the beginning, I usually just kind of use them as a, a placement. Uh, same thing with the transmitted light. Uh, I just use them to try to start to separate out the front grapes or the grapes that are going to have more detail put on them. Uh, so these two here that transmitted light just kind of runs into each other. Come back in with a little bit of gray. And I always think it's a good idea, you know, make your highlights bigger. Then it's better to try to make them maybe a little gloppy even, and then, you know, carve it down, make it finer with your brush. You know, use the brush to uh, move that paint around. Really feel, really feel that paint moving around on the end of your brush, and and uh, pay attention to how how it's coming off your brush, how you can control it. You know, over here I might tone the highlights down a little bit, uh, that they're closer to the uh, background. Uh, so it's all to you know how. Um, how you want the image to be read. And if you just kind of take a recipe, like I'm giving you sort of base, a basic specific recipe here, so to speak, on how to make a grape look like a grape. But you also want to consider, you know, the, the entire idea, I guess your, your, your uh, pictorial idea uh, first, you know, and then use the grapes to uh, you know get the look of grapes. You don't have to have every single grape painted the same way in order for us to understand that these are grapes. Okay. Now uh, you know so you can you know put some more background color on those that are underneath and kind of behind here. I want to have a, a nice harder edge there, however. You, know, you could use totally different colors too, you know, if you're in a different 
you're painting like a, a more earthier toned painting, you might be using Venetian red or terra rosa instead of, uh, you know, the cads. Okay, we're going to do a little bit more background color, which is basically just raw umber, ivory black, and a little touch of Naples yellow. It's actually lead tin yellow from uh, natural pigments, which I just think is so beautiful. So you can see from this point on, it's just kind of modifying, refining, um, deciding, you know, which ones are going to be more illuminated or maybe have, you know, a little bit more color to them. And also, how are they showing up against the background? Uh, is it visible enough? You know, I can also gradate the light a little bit more, you know, around the highlight instead of just having one, you know, one punch of highlight. I might just have to get rid of the highlight there for the moment altogether. Come back. Okay, so this is going to be the last segment. I told you I'm working. I'm working to get these shorter. <laughs> um, okay, so when again, I want to consider the whole thing, not just um, did I just paint my grapes. So I already, you know, have a lot of background painted in, but and I have it's sort of this wood shelf edge painted in, but. Um, and again, I don't, I'm not doing a whole lot of depth in this painting. It's just a very straightforward, you know, uh, straight across eye level painting. Um, but one thing you want to make sure that you do is that, you know, you do get a sense of light on your tabletop. You know, it'll help also to show where um, the cast shadow is from the grapes. Actually, I don't quite even have some cast shadow in. Now, also, if I, you know, was in a larger, if, if I had a lot of more, a lot more room on this cast shadow, well, we can probably still do it. You can get also a little bit of uh, reflected light into the cast shadow. The, the further away it gets from the from the object. It's maybe a little bit more glow, more of the cadmium in there as it gets further away. Now I'm just basically using a mixture of my background color. Just getting a nice kind of cool lighted look. All of my top planes, all of my top planes are much more lit up than uh, the perpendicular planes. So I usually like to build in a warm under color and then build on like some cool light. Oops. All right. Um, I do feel like this one up here is. It just needs something more to it. It's a little, it just maybe feels a little small. Let's just maybe just beef it up a bit. It's a good exercise too to give yourself some time constraints when you're working on a painting because uh, you can kind of, it can kind of force you to uh, think a little quicker and make some more, make more decisions, you know. I would say more beneficial decisions rather than kind of futzing around a lot. If that's a word, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> okay, so just kind of working out of uh, the nice thing about having all these colors on the palette too is I can just kind of mix them together, grab, mix a whole bunch together that I've already got on there to get some neutrals without have to, having to worry too much about is that the exact color that I need, but 
It's not so much the exact color, it's more the neutrality of the color that I'm looking for. I think on this one we'll play up uh, that darker piece right before the glow happens and maybe exaggerate the a little touch of the glow on this one. You know, so it's really all of these kind of uh, more neutral colors that um, really make the more colorful bits, more saturated bits sing. So if you have everything really, really super colorful, um, you know, in a sense, then everything is colorful. So nothing, uh, almost in a sense, your, your non-colors or your neutrals might start to stand out because in a painting, everything's all about these relationships. Uh, one little thing I want to do is just get, you know, use a little bit of that, well, it's not quite background color, but the value is what we want. So add a little bit more. Just kind of carve out, there's a really beautiful little negative space here underneath one of the grapes. Okay, so because it's not totally a a solid mass. I have a little peekaboo of light under there, which is really fun. Uh, that's nice. Okay, there is, I uh, just want to build a little bit more light, just a touch. Take it away. This may have just a bit too much color in it. Okay, it's a little better. Uh, same thing with some of this get a couple of ideas of those little, you know, where the grapes have been taken off of the stem. Ugh. You got to make sure if you're wanting to put down a crisp piece of paint, a harder edge, you got to make sure that your paint is really sitting on the tip of your brush. Um, one last little thing, and I think we're going to be done with this. This is particular grape. I think the dusting on it can be built up a bit more to bring it forward from the background. So we'll build a little bit more light on that, a little bit more dusting on that. And there's also kind of a bit of cast shadow in between this grape and the next grape. So you also want to see where maybe one grape is casting a shadow onto the other one. Uh, so you can get a sense of that, uh, you know, space, true, true sense of space and dimension. This one, the highlight's totally misplaced, so just take it out. You know, I had it way too far to the right. So just start to modify and see things that maybe you need to change. If you get a shape too large, you can come back with the color underneath it and just carve it away. It's easier to go darker I think than it is to go lighter so um, you know if you get a little too much light in one area I think it's easier to make it darker if you have to um, than you know to make a, a lighter if you have like a white teacup and you paint it in, painted it in way too dark of course that would be really hard. Uh, to recover from, so in that case you probably just have to scrape and start over. Which there's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with that either. Uh, we all have a tendency to get really attached or want to, uh, at least I do anyway, and I've seen a lot of people <laughs> also do the same thing. Um, but it's quite liberating whenever you do allow yourself uh, to say, no, that wasn't right, and I want it to be right, so I'm going to take it off rather than, you know, just keep on holding on to it. Now, you can also use the back of your brush if you don't want to switch hands for a skewer or something else, you know, you can also. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, that's all the time I have. So just get a little bit of cast shadow underneath here and uh, carve my name in it, uh, in this case, <laughs> and call it done, where to do it. Oh.
Oh boy. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you and uh, I will uh, see you next month with another uh, demonstration. Thank you.